Godot and a ton of tips and tricks. Let's get started. All right, so the first method we're gonna look at is waiting a specific amount of time in a chunk of code or really anywhere in your game. And typically you're gonna to wanna to create a timer node for this, but let's say you don't wanna set that up and get it from the scene tree. Maybe you just want a temporary wait in your code. So you can do that really simply with this line right here. So it's going to be await get underscore tree dot create timer. And then you're just gonna pass in the amount of time you want this timer to be set for. So we're gonna say 2.0. And then on this timer, we're gonna await for the timeout signal. And this is just gonna add a two second wait to our script. So when I run this, it's going to wait two seconds and then it prints the hello in the output. You can also use a similar method to await a single frame by calling await get underscore tree dot physics frame. And then you can also use process frame if you'd like. And that will again, just wait one frame for the respective process mode. While we're still on the topic of the coding aspect of Godot, did you know there's a little arrow to the bottom left of your viewport here? And this is gonna collapse the panel on the left here so that we have more space for our coding window. And if you're really fancy, you can actually code using a different program like VS Code. And to do that, you can actually just check out the link. It will be in the card right above my head and that'll show you how to set up VS Code with Godot. Another useful tip is that you can actually control click on different functions or properties and it's going to bring you to the Godot documentation for that property. So if we go back to our game and we click on the get tree function, it's going to bring us to the definition and we can read about how the function actually works. We can also create our own documentation for functions as well. So if I defined a new my function, and all I'm gonna do in here is return one. I can now add documentation to my function by adding two hash tags on the line directly above it and simply typing what the function does. So we're gonna say returns the number one. Now, just like before, if I call this function anywhere, like let's say I typed my function, I can control click my own functions and it will bring me to the definition. And I can also click F1 on my keyboard and it's gonna open the Godot documentation for my local project. So from here, I can search for any built-in methods in Godot, different functionality for nodes, or I can search for anything that I've made. And in this case, anything I've registered to my Godot documentation with the double hashtag syntax. So if I search for my function, you can see that it pops up right here. And by clicking on it, you can see that we get the internal documentation and it's saying this function returns the number one. Now over to some more in editor features. I'm in a project here that I've been working on for a bit and we're gonna go into the file explorer and check out some really neat features that not a lot of people know about. Now, one of my favorites is you can actually right click on files and add them to favorites with this button right here. And this is going to basically insert them in a special collection at the top of your file explorer. And this way I can just click on the full Folder that I added to my favorites and it'll link me directly to the original folder. Now speaking on files, did you know that you can actually right click on any resource and select view owners and this is going to pop up a list of all the places that this resource is being used. So for example, I have my texture which is only being used in my player scene, but if you're going to be deleting or reworking some of your systems, this is a really great way to see what parts of your game might be breaking and fix those early on. Another really neat feature that not a lot of people know about is the markers that you can actually add to your viewport. And you can add these markers by going to the rulers on the left and top side of your viewport and simply dragging over your viewport and it's gonna add these purple lines. And these are very good for obviously like measuring things. If you wanna line things up along like a far distance, then this is gonna be really helpful. And to get rid of these, you can simply just drag them back into the sides of your viewport. And then really similar to that feature is the ruler tool. So this is at the top of your viewport at the toolbar. And by clicking on the ruler, we can then click and drag and we can measure the distance or the angle between things in the game world. The next tip is if you click on any node and go to an input field, you can actually just write a math expression inside any of these inputs. So we could say something like five plus five, and then by clicking enter, it's going to actually solve the equation and give us 10. Another really cool feature is checking if the player is running an exported version of your game, or maybe you're just running the game in a test mode like through Godot. You can actually check this with the OS dot is debug build. And by putting this in an if statement like this, we're not only gonna print the statement if the game is being run in Godot. Now, the last tip I'm gonna share with you is actually a plugin and the plugin is called embed game. And I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description, but basically what it does is if I wanna run my game, but I don't like this window popping up in a separate like application window, what I can do is just check this box at the top of my editor and it's going to embed the game window into Godot. So this is now a game embedded inside of 
the Godot application, and this is obviously really good if you're like sharing your screen or something, or you just want to play your game in the same window. Now, like I said, this is a plugin, so you can go ahead and install it from the link in the description, and all credit goes to Fabi Makes Games, I believe that's how you pronounce it, so make sure to check him out as well. Anyways, though, that's going to do it for the tips and tricks in this video. I do want to make some more of these videos and probably turn it into a series or something. So if you guys have any tips and tricks you'd like to share with the community, make sure to drop them in the comments and I'll add them to the next video. But anyways, I hope you learned something new. If you did, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as it is free and it's also the best way to help support the channel. And if you'd like to check out more of my content, you can look in the description for all the various links and such. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.